So I'm Richard Winfield, I'm from the Directors Academy. And the webinar today is reopening to a new normal, considerations for boards. Uh, and as Richard Winfield, I'm the independent authority on director development. I'm an international trainer and facilitator. I specialize in corporate governance and executive coaching. And I'm the founder of the Directors Academy and the author of the new Directors Handbook series. So I call, call people when they want to bring structure and clarity to their thinking. I can help you identify core issues and make complex ideas simple, holding the space for you to create your own solutions. So, reopening to a new normal, considerations for boards, is a paper issued in May by Harvard Law School Forum on Corporate Governance. And so this is just a summary of it for your benefit. The pandemic has presented boards with a host of unforeseen challenges. It hasn't altered the board's fundamental responsibilities, but it has created another layer of complexity for the directors who must fulfill them. Companies face an altered landscape and heightened scrutiny on leadership, risk management, and relationships with employers, customers, and other stakeholders. Boards should think broadly, remain alert to emergent risks, and help guide management through the unknown unknowns. The development and execution of a reopening plan is a management function. However, boards of directors should be familiar with the major elements of that plan for their companies. Because after all, the directors are responsible for overseeing and approving such plans. So considerations for boards in preparation for a return to a new normal employee customer and supplier health and safety this is one of their headings increased focus on the safety of personnel and where applicable customers and suppliers companies should review their health and safety policies and procedures before employers are able to come back to the workspaces and company properties so in other words it is no longer sufficient to uh, call people back from working at home until you have put into place the necessary equipment maybe layout and rules and processes for their safety next regulatory compliance you should review compliance and oversight policies to cover any new regulations and in fact it should also to cover any new guidance which is issued ensure that management is prepared to deal with any increase in regulatory scrutiny. Scenario analysis. Boards should review and understand management's plans for operating while the pandemic continues, including under different assumptions as to duration and severity. Now, one of the things that you need to think about is not only how long might this go on, but might it return? So you need to have uh, plans for uh, raising and lowering the standards uh, of uh, security and uh, hygiene, etc., that you need. Capital allocation review. Boards should evaluate different strategies for preserving liquidity. As ever, cash is king to survival. And under the current situations during the pandemic, it's particularly important that you keep an eye on liquidity. Medium and long term strategic planning. Boards should continue to consider medium and long-term outcomes when making short-term decisions. In other words, it's very important to focus on the short term because you need to make sure that you can exist day to day and that you can look after the safety of your staff and maintain your products and services. But that in no way should get in the way of dealing with medium and long-term outcomes, which after all are the future of the organization. Long-term plans should be reassessed over time as the impact of the pandemic becomes clear. So as the new norm comes in, then you should ensure that your plans are appropriate. Stakeholder engagement and transparency. Boards should work with management to develop a general approach to communications with shareholders and other stakeholders. 
So you'd have this normally, but again, these things need to be reviewed. And in particular, in any time of change such as this, then communication becomes increasingly important. Re revisiting ESG, that's environmental, social and governance. Whilst certain ESG concerns, notably climate related risks, have taken a back seat, assuming they have, if these have taken a back seat to social concerns, boards should continue to identify the ESG risks that affect their company and devise long term solutions. So the pandemic has had lots of benefits in terms of shaking up the way people are thinking and enabling people uh, and organizations to realize that there are things that they can do that they didn't know they could do or to bring forward changes quite rapidly. And one of the possible benefits of this is that you can take this new awareness and flexibility into dealing with the climate related risks. The important point is the climate situation has not gone away. And whatever you're doing in the short term, it's really, really important to continue to focus on that. But the general feedback seems to be that it's actually having a higher profile and becoming more significant in people's thinking as the pandemic continues. Activism and takeover preparedness. So lots of things are going to change and your leadership and your processes and so on are going to be put to test and outsiders will be observing and monitoring what you do. So board actions and performance during the pandemic will be among the items subject to activist scrutiny and takeover activity will increase if valuations are depressed and do not reflect the full value of the company's future. So if the perception of the value of the organization in terms of its share price, for example, goes down below what is a reasonable expectation in terms of recovery afterwards, you might well find that you're uh, likely to receive some approaches from others because it's a good time to get some bargains. So companies should be prepared to respond to takeover approaches, including potential and unsolicited bids. So in other words, you've got to be aware that there might be people around taking advantage of this. And there might also be opportunities both for preserving your future and making better use uh, of your resources. Updating risk and oversight processes. Lessons from the pandemic will provide a company specific guide to improving various facets of board risk oversight. So you've been put to the test. It's a very good time to review now how successful you've been, whether you've learned some lessons and whether some things that didn't work out as well as they should do. So it's a good time for improving your oversight for risk, including the allocation of responsibilities within the board and its committees, coordination with management and access to information and expertise. In other words, it's a good time to look at the way information is flowing. Preserving culture and purpose. Boards should review how the company's actions have aligned with its core values and identify strategies to improve culture if needed and foster cohesion. So again, the way that you and your management have behaved during the pandemic can show uh, some signals as to where there might be weaknesses and there may be times to review both the behavior and the rules within which the management and staff operate. So that is the summary of the report. And I thank very much Andrew Brownstein Stephen Rosenblum and David Silk, who were the authors of this paper, which was submitted and published by the Harvard Law School Forum on Corporate Governance. And just as a bonus, I've just added some tools which might be relevant to you at this time. So we refer to the need to look at different scenarios. It's actually a really good time to do some proper scenario planning because if the future was difficult before, forecasting the future is going to be even more difficult now. Uh, scenario planning as done by the Brevi Group is based on the South African model, and we show it here. You will find it in my book, The New Director's Handbook. Quarters five forces, again, 
things are going to be different or may well be different after the pandemic or during the pandemic and it is a good opportunity to review these five forces the bargaining power of customers the threat of new entrants the threat of substitute products bargaining power of suppliers and generally competitive rivalry within an industry a blue ocean strategy is a wonderful opportunity it's a process for thinking how you can radically change the way you do your business and in particular uh, well products and, and uh, services you might develop and the SWOT analysis looking at your strengths weaknesses and opportunities and threats and then the towels analysis which is superimposed on it is how to develop strategies for example strategies to pursue opportunities that are good fit for the company's strengths or and strategies to overcome weaknesses to pursue opportunities strategies to identify ways that the firm can use its strengths to reduce its vulnerability to external threats very relevant just now and strategies to establish a defensive plan to prevent the firm's weaknesses from making it highly susceptible to external strengths. So these are all tools which just might happen to be more relevant to you at present. And you will find them described in the handbook. So thank you very much from me, Richard Winfield, and to remind you that the Directors Academy at www.thedirectorsacademy.com is an online resource for everything you need to know for training, development, and per performance as directors and boards. That's me, Richard Winfield, and till my next webinar, which I'm looking forward to presenting to you, goodbye.